Good afternoon. Good to see such a big audience. I'm here with a man who has inspired millions of Indians to work for the environment and particularly to clean up and save the fantastic, beautiful, big rivers uh, of India. So I think we will explore a little bit what inspires you and then how you're able to inspire others and then later we'll move on to maybe the more practical issues regarding how you can achieve such a, such a big, uh, big mo uh, movement in, in India. But let's start, start there. I mean, how, how you have been inspired to, to start working for the environment? Namaskaram. Good, good afternoon to everyone. <laughs> My engagement with uh, rivers and forests of southern India started very early for me. When I was eight, nine years of age, uh, if I got enough money to buy food for three to four days, I just managed this and disappeared into the jungles by myself. Well, it was a big concern <laughs> for those who bore me, but <laughs> Your mother liked it or? Uh, oh, I just lived in the jungles and and when I was there, I did not experience this as some kind of nature or natural beauty. I just saw it as a life larger than myself. Mm -hmm. And when I was seventeen, I floated down Kaveri River for 163 kilometers for thirteen days, beating off the river, living off the river, just on four truck tubes and a few bamboos. And the river is a life beyond you and me. People like you and me come and go, but these rivers have been flowing for millions of years and they must flow forever. But such a mighty life, we've brought it down to its knees today. Mm -hmm. The rivers that I saw at that time, fifty years ago, and the rivers that I see today are just half of what they used to be. They say average depletion is around forty-four percent, but many rivers are well below half and many of them which were perennial for millions of years have become seasonal rivers. This year, Kaveri did not touch the ocean for three and a half months. It dried up hundred and seventy kilometers inland. The entire length of Kaveri in Tamil Nadu, between these two states, Karnataka and Tamil Nadu, there is a big war for water. It's going on for the last twenty-five years. But the entire length of the river is only four hundred thirty kilometers but it dried up hundred and seventy kilometers in land. Hmm. And the sad part is when we did this painting competition across the country in over a hundred and sixty thousand schools, many children when we asked them to paint a river, they just painted sand. Hmm. This is the experience of the people. And wh why is that? Why are they going so dry? Is agriculture? Why, 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 is, why is it happening? See, in India only four percent of the river water is glacial or mm -hmm. ice-fed, rest is all forest-fed. Forest-fed essentially means we have rains, unlike in Europe, we have rains for only on an average of forty to forty-five days across the country, which is our monsoon. <laughs> this forty-five days of precipitation, we are supposed to hold it in the land mm -hmm. for three hundred and sixty-five days and let it go in the river slowly. If this has to happen, substantial vegetation has to be there. There is a serious removal of vegetation, not only in the form of forests, but also in the farmlands there used to be vegetation. For example, in the Ganga Basin, which amounts to twenty-five percent of India's geography and thirty-three percent of India's agricultural produce, in the last fifty years we have removed ninety-four percent of the green cover, ninety-four percent. This has happened mainly because I know this well because forty, forty-five years ago I was into farming and uh, at that time when the new uh, movement came of green revolution where we started using fertilizers for the first time, chemical fertilizers, fertilizer companies openly advised every farmer to remove all the trees because fertilizer gets absorbed by the aggressive root system of the trees and it will not produce yield for the crops. So, across the country in the last thirty-five, forty years, a huge depletion of green cover happened. That is the main reason why waters have receded. Another thing is there is a serious exploitation of groundwater, which is an inevitable consequence of not having enough water in the rivers. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in your video, you said something like, people believe that water brings forest, but the opposite is more true, forest brings water. It is so, it is… there is substantial science today to show you that it is the tree cover which attracts rain 
And right now, we see that wherever the rains happen in India, the monsoon is becoming so scattered, though the same volume of water is coming down in principle, in the last hundred years, there's not been too much variation in the amount of water or the precipitation coming down on the Indian subcontinent. But where it is coming down, in what patterns it is coming down has completely altered, mainly because of lack of green cover. And today there's no more uh, debate about it, everybody knows that it's a forest which draw water or rain. <laughs>